So to solve the create resource manager lab, we know we need to add a call to a create resource manager and make it a volatile resource manager. So this is where we need to add the call. We look up the create resource manager function prototype and see how we can do that. So we're going to initialize the handle. And here we see we can specify different arguments. So the first one needs to be a pointer to a security attribute, but it can also be null for default attribute. So we're just going to specify null. Then we need to specify a grid. For now, I'm just going to specify null. Then we have create options, any option for the new resource manager, and we want to specify a volatile one. So we're going to use that macro. Then we need to specify the handle to the transaction manager that will manage the transaction for this resource manager. So above we see we specified, we got the transaction manager handle from the create transaction manager function. So we can use that. And finally, a description for this resource manager. We're just going to use null for now. Okay, so now that we've done that, uh, we're going to try to build this and just run it. Looks like it's failing to copy the binary, probably because it's blocked on a breakpoint. No, it's not. Oh, it's because the binary was already executing. So I'm just going to exit it and then just rebuild it. So now we execute our modified binary. We see we're going to hit a key to create the resource manager. And then it fails with the error 998. If we look up the error code on the MSDN, and we are interested in the 998, we see that it's because of invalid access to memory location. So if we go back to the actual parameters, one mistake we've done is that the second argument needs to be a pointer to the resource manager grid. This parameter is required and must not be null. So maybe that's why, because we passed null. We need to pass a valid grid. So we're going to give a pointer to the grid. So let's try again. We hit a key again to create it. Now we see it passed the test. So it actually created the resource manager and now we can hit another key to exit. Okay, so now we have a working binary. We can debug it. As specified in the lab instruction, we're gonna set a breakpoint on the NT create resource manager X function. So in winbag, we set a breakpoint on this function and continue execution. Then we go on the target VM and just rerun the binary. You can see that it breaks. So here, actually, it hasn't reached the, the, the place we are interested in, so it's not the right breakpoint, so we'll just continue execution. Now it tells us to hit Enter to create a resource manager. So we're just gonna hit Enter. Now we reach our breakpoints. So if you don't see a beautiful backtrace here, you can just do reload. So after it has finished, you can probably see the backtrace. And this time we see that it's actually coming from our username binary create resource manager underscore lab dot exe and that is calling the NT create resource manager syscall, which corresponds to our create resource manager function and then it reaches the actual syscall in kernel. 
So we can see that WinBag is synchronized with uh, Ghidra. One uh, problem we're going to see in Ghidra is that the arguments are not defined. All the code is actually unclear because the variables are don't have names. The functions uh, don't have any prototype. So I'm just going to redefine everything similarly to uh, the basic binary diffing method we've used there. I guess something worth noting too is that it's still TM Recover Resource Manager X that we want to eventually reverse correctly. But in the process of understanding KTM, we are going to start looking at a bunch of KTM functions. And the first thing we need to do is create a resource manager. And it is the same developers that wrote this function and TM Recover Resource Manager X, which we don't know how to run yet. We may as well start documenting something like NT create resource manager in Ghidra because it will get us in the mode of like understanding the way they write the code, the way we need to annotate the structures, the way certain functions get called or whatever. And in a lot of cases, when you define a structure, that structure might propagate into lower level KTM function in other areas. So what ends up happening is that you document underlying functions that may be TM recover resource manager X also calls. So there is a lot of value in just starting annotations in simple functions like NT create resource manager, even though it is not the function that is the end goal. Okay, so now we can see we have defined the arguments of the Swiss call based on the MSDN page related to the NT create resource manager Swiss call. So the first argument is actually the return handle for the resource manager and all the other arguments are the same as the create resource manager API in New Zealand. We can see uh, we have defined most of the variables based on the understanding of the function. We can see that initially based on the previous mode, depending on it's called from user or kernel mode, it's actually going to do certain checks on the arguments. And if it fails to pass the check, it's going to actually raise exceptions. Then we can see it checks other arguments like the create option that the value is more than four, also checks that the description is non null. We can see here from here that there are certain APIs being called ob reference object by handle. So this function is used to get an object based on the handle. So we can see it's passing the transaction manager handle, which we assume is valid based on the code we call from username. And then it's actually going to initialize an object. So if we look for that API, we can see it provides access validation on the object handle and if access can be granted, return the corresponding pointer to the object. So we pass a handle and it's going to return an object. This is the handle for the object and pointer to a variable that receives a pointer to the object's body. So in our case, we can see we're requesting for a transaction manager object type. So this should be renamed transaction manager object. Um, and then here it's creating an object of the type resource manager object type. So if we look for that function, We see it takes the object type as workout argument attributes, and then the actual object is returned. So the prototype doesn't match the one we found, but basically here, the only argument that we can see that is going to be a return value is this one. So I assume this one is the object for the resource manager. Here we can see a call to tm initialize resource manager, which would make sense that it takes the resource manager object of the first argument, also taking the tm object. Here it's inserting a resource manager object into something. Okay, so I think we have a pretty good understanding of the function. From a high level perspective, it's checking the arguments. 
then it's actually accessing the transaction manager object and finally it's creating the resource manager object and initializing it so now we're ready to debug it so i'm going to set a breakpoint on the actual call where it's actually retrieving the transaction manager so to do that i'm going to refer to the uh, gidra cheat sheet and you can set a breakpoint from grader into winbag using control f2 so I'm going to go on to the call ob reference object by handle and hit control F2. And you can see maybe here that actually it set a breakpoint automatically in WinBag. So now I'm going to continue execution. We can see we've hit our breakpoint on the actual call. So if we look at the different arguments, We have one, two, three, four, five. The fifth argument is actually the pointer to the transaction manager object that's going to be returned. So it's going to actually be on the stack. So this is likely a pointer. So if we go over that call by stepping over, And now, we print the actual object again. Looks like we are still So we're still Supposing we hit the function twice, we're going to step over. Now we see it has changed. So if we look at this, we assume this is a transaction manager. So here, a couple of things we can notice. This is indeed a transaction manager because we can see the cookie is initialized to BOO, BOO04, which is known to be a cookie. Uh, then we can see the transaction manager is noted as online. It has a grid, which for now we don't know if it's valid, but it's, it's initialized. There is no log, which is maybe because it's volatile. There is a, a link list. So this looks, this looks valid because the same pointer is used, so it means it's uh, actually an empty list. Then it's pointing to a resource manager for now and another list, which is empty as well. So now let's step until the, the next thing. So we can see it's going to call the ob create object function. So this is here. So this is supposed to create a resource manager object. So the resource manager object is passed from the last argument. And if we look here, we can see it's actually retrieved from RSP plus an offset. So if we look up, We can see it corresponds to RSP plus 68. So it's not initialized yet, so we're going to step over. So now let's look at this as a carry source manager. What comes to mind here is that it's actually not initialized because there is no cookie. So the list entry doesn't make any sense. It's not the linked list. The grid is not valid. It looks 
not valid. So either I'm wrong with this address being the carry source manager and I got it wrong, or it's actually not initialized. If we look again at the code, we remember that actually after we create the object, we actually have a call to initialize resource manager. So I'm just going to set a breakpoint on this call with control F2 and then continue execution. We see we call that function just before the call. If we look at RCX, we can see that corresponds to the previously shown address that I tried to interpret as a query source manager. So actually it was valid. So now I'm just going to go over that call. And I'm going to print again the query source manager. So now we can see it's initialized. The cookie is valid. It's actually a resource manager that is online. So the grid is interesting because we actually specified a grid, which is 379E769. And we can see 379E769. So the grid is the one we specified from Reusenon. The list entry is valid because it's an, an empty list. There is no description, which is what we did from Usernand. And the KTM address, if we look back to what we actually specified, what we printed earlier, it does correspond to the transaction manager we printed earlier. So we're good. I think we are done with actually demonstrating that we can print addresses for the transaction manager and the resource manager, which was the goal of this lab. Thanks for watching.